Katia v5 aligning objects. Let's take a look at the objects within the case study scene. So the first one will be the tractor cabin over here. We have a step file. The following one will be a mannequin. The third object will be a rubber tire, which as we can see, this is an STL added within a digital shape editor. So we see the color of the STL. I have over here a floor, which is um, a padded rectangle. The same over here for the top element. I have a pyramid from Imagine Shape, and I also have a cylinder with thickness, which was created within Generative Shape Design. So we see the wide variety of colors. We have part design, we have Imagine and Shape, we have Generative Shape Design with uh, thickness, and also we have um, step file over here as surface and um, an STL file. Now, in order to align objects, as we can see over here, I am currently within assembly design. And you are maybe familiar with the possibility to add constraints between a wide variety of elements. For example, I can add between that face and the one over here. And we're going to see how those will uh, be updated. If I will also add a contact between that and that, we're going to see that we already have an existing constraint, which is the coincidence over here. Now, since this is waiting for an update, I will have to update all, and we're going to see how that updated. So just by adding the coincidence, we no longer need to add also the contact constraints, because um, in this case, those two faces will be positioned. But as we can see over here, this added um, a constraint over here. If I were to delete that, and I will select this cube and bring it over here, I can also have the possibility to align them using the align side feature. So over here, where I have this, I will just type in the command. This is actually a command from Delmia. If you are not familiar uh, with Delmia, it is the same software as Katia, but will have other workbenches. So if I will write over here a line side, I will press enter. We're going to see that initially on the left screen of the, of the left part of the screen, we're going to have to select a reference plane. And if I will move my mouse over uh, the elements, we're going to see how those normal two faces will be positioned. So the reference will be, for example, the plane. And afterwards, I will select the face that I want to align. So that one. And we're going to see again how those two objects were positioned. But the main difference is that we're no longer going to have a constraint over here. So if you're going to check the, um, the tree feature over here, the coincidence constraint hasn't been added, but those objects have been, as we can see over here, aligned. Let me just jump into the left view because I see a little bit of, um, of gap between those. And again, if I clicked once again, we're going to have that positioned over there. So let me just undo and do that again. So align side. I want on this top part, I want the bottom of that. As you can see, a little gap will appear over there. If I will click once again, uh, for example, on the bottom, we see that the feature is no longer active. But let's try the same, for example, with the STL over here. So I'll type in over here, align side. The reference will be the top of this. And afterwards, I will select the STL. So I will select the surface over there, and we're going to see how that has been positioned. But again, we're going to see a little bit of overlapping between those two. Currently, Katia is doing an automating save, so that's why it lagged a little bit. But we see how those two surfaces have been matched over here. And since I added that, section over there, we're going to have all those overlapping. 
if I will undo and I will create again to do an align side that face keep in mind that forest here for example I want to select maybe this face over here we're gonna see how that will swap back into position and we're gonna see how those two will be merged so we no longer gonna have that position over there if I will go to a side view we're gonna see that for STLs they this kind of align side will do a perfect match with existing part design just like we had um, over there okay let's try that again for example with the pyramid align side align side and i will have the reference and i will have the bottom of this pyramid and as we can see those haven't been uh, properly aligned so i do that again align side i want the top part to be aligned with the bottom of this pyramid as you can see for the imaginary shape this align feature will not work as intended but if i will go with the classical uh, coincidence for example i want the plane and this we're gonna see that um, that will not be a viable selection as well so the imaginary shape feature over here is a little bit um, more trickier I can select that edge but as we can see we can no longer select it with a different element over there we always have the possibility to use the compass so I can snap this I can select the object we're gonna see the reference will jump over here and afterwards I can start work with that the problem with the line is that we're gonna have that point centered and not, not the bottom of this one so if I will move the axis and how this has been created and again if I will align that we're going to see that actually we're going to have that reference aligned so the bottom of this with that we're going to have the overlap and the positioning done over here so keep that in mind for imaginary shape uh, pieces for example for this um, extruded circle which I then added thickness within generative shape design we're gonna have the reference over there so let's see how this will um, react to align side I want the floor reference and I want the bottom of this so I will zoom in and click on that surface and we're gonna see that this will act um, accordingly so we're gonna have that alignment done if I will try to do the alignment with uh, the mannequin let's see align side I want the top surface over here to be aligned with the mannequin so I will select um, the feet over there and we're gonna see that they will be actually at the same um, level so let me just undo that because I clicked once and I repositioned that so as we can see those are positioned at the same um, height so I can just select the mannequin over here and I can uh, move it let me just use the compass for this I will select the mannequin and have it translate over here and uh, yeah. we're gonna have that perfect overlap between those two over there so this is regarding a line side but as we can see this will work according to the um, axis system so keep that in mind also the main advantage of a line side feature is that this doesn't, doesn't add any constraints if you don't want those you can use this workload to position your objects okay so if you find this video useful consider to give this video a thumbs up also consider to subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content so that's it see you in the next video